This episode shows the effects of too much exposure to UV light. Viewer discretion is advised. Ultraviolet light, or UV. When used incorrectly, it can bleach the color right out of your crops. But when it's used correctly, it can increase pigmentation, giving your crops a beautiful color. It can even increase flavor. I'm Farmer Tyler, and welcome to Flavor Town. This is episode three of Plants and Light. The next six episodes are gonna focus on light quality, which is the specific colors of light. We'll start with the shorter wavelengths and go to the longer wavelengths. And the shortest on our list is UV, or ultraviolet. Ultraviolet light can be ultraviolet if misused. It really all depends on what specific wavelengths of UV are used and how they're applied. There's three categories within UV light. There's A, B, and C. We'll start with UVC, 100 to 280 nanometers, the shortest wavelengths of the bunch. Very destructive. UVC is germicidal. It can destroy microorganisms. It's used to sanitize liquids, surfaces, air. Luckily, in nature, most of the UVC is absorbed by the ozone layer. But growers like to introduce it to their garden, usually in two specific ways. Either in line, which is in a pipe to sanitize the liquids, which is usually the nutrient solution going to their garden, or possibly the water coming out of a well, or whatever their water source is, to make sure it's free of pathogens. And the other application is directly on the plants, usually used as an overhead light UVC can actually kill pathogens like powdery mildew. UVC lights should definitely be operated with caution. They can be dangerous. UVC can destroy DNA. You shouldn't be around it when it's on. When it's used in line, it's shielded, so growers won't be interacting with the light. And when it's used overhead to kill pathogens like powdery mildew, Usually growers will run it when they aren't in the garden. They'll usually place it lower in the garden so they aren't near it or interacting with it. Yeah, anytime you're working with UV, pretty much any of the UVs, you always want to be safe, but always be careful when you're working with UVC. Next up, UVB, 280 to 320 nanometers. Also destructive. But most of the UVB in nature is also absorbed by the ozone layer. But with the depletion of the ozone layer over the last few decades, there's more UVB than ever, so yay. UVB can cause sunburns and it can bleach the color right out of your crops. That's a UVB light right there. Why do I have that in my garden if it can damage my crops? UVB can signal a stress response. This response can include the increased production of pigments that act as a sunscreen for the plants, or it can increase the production of antioxidants. And in some crops, plants even respond by increasing their resin production. All of these defensive responses affect flavor often improving flavor. Plants create a lot of defensive compounds, including flavonoids, terpenoids, terpenes, and these have all kinds of roles, like deterring pests that would come eat the plant, or attracting natural predators of that pest that would come eat the plant, or attracting pollinators. But most importantly for the grower, these compounds affect flavor. In this tent, I grew tomatoes, Italian basil, citrus basil, and lavender. On one side, I didn't use any UV. On the other side, I used 
two UVB fixtures. And I just took samples from both sides and I sent them to a lab for a terpene analysis. To see the full results of the analyses, check out farmertyler.com. But it's just amazing what you can see visually. The leaves are visually shinier when they're grown under UV. All right, on to UVA. 320 to 400 nanometers. The effects of UVA on plants are pretty similar to the effects seen with blue light, which include inhibition of cell elongation, which can help create short, stout plants. It can also help stimulate the production of anthocyanin, the red-purple pigment in plants. If you're interested in using UV in your garden, the first decision is what type of UV. If you're using UVC for water sterilization, or if you're using UVC to kill pathogens on the surface of a leaf, you're gonna to wanna to get a UVC fixture made for that specific application. For UVB, there's fixtures like these. They may not look like they're putting out a lot, but plants are very sensitive to UVB and just a, a small doses can have huge effects. Most growers use UVB in the last couple weeks of growth because UVB can actually slow down growth. So you only wanna use it once the plants have already established a lot of their biomass. Pretty much they've gotten most of their growing done and now it's time for the ripening. It's time for them to develop their flavors and improve the quality. So you can turn on the UVB in small doses and with some crops you can visually see the increase in resin production. On this Italian basil and on this lemon basil, after a couple hours of UVB, the leaves were shiny with oil. But each crop is different, each, each plant is different, so you want to test it in small doses. I made a UV beginner's mistake UV beginner's mistake and gave a little bit too much. And you can see the damage on my tomatoes, the leaves are a little fried up, and on the lemon basil. But before I went too far, ooh, they looked super shiny. And then I tried to go even more shiny, and they didn't get more shiny, they got more dead. So give UVB in small doses, don't overdo it. You can get drastic results with small doses. There's a lot of grow lights that already have some UVA in them, like T5 fluorescence will usually have some, some UVA, and metal halide, and ceramic metal halide. These all have some UVA in them, and usually provide enough UVA where you're gonna get the benefits like increased pigmentation, so production of anthocyanin, without giving too much where you would damage the crop. This has been episode three of Plants and Light. There's a lot more to discuss on UV. So to learn more, check out FarmerTyler.com. In the next episode, we look at one of the most important colors for plant growth, blue light. I'm Farmer Tyler, and the more you know, the better you grow. What's up, Roy boy? This episode was made possible with support from Hydrofarm. In this episode, we saw the Sunburst CMH, the Phantom DE HPS, the Solar System UVB fixture, and a variety of tools that helped us make this video possible. Thank you, Hydrofarm.